In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to code a simple chat client using C Sharp and Azure OpenAI. The first thing you need to do is to create a deployment of a model for you to be able to use it. Go to oai.azure.com and then go over to the management section and click on deployments. If you don't already have one, click create new deployment. Here you can choose the model you wish to use. You can use the latest version or pick a version and then you can give it a name and you're going to need this. So remember your deployment name. And once you've done that, select your deployment and then click open in playground. This can let you use the model to test it out, but we're going to use it to retrieve some of the other configuration options that we're going to need to store in our code. So if you click on view code and then switch over to C sharp, you're going to see um, your URI, which you need to copy, uh, your deployment model name, which you already made in the last step. And then if you scroll to the bottom, there's an API key that you need to copy. Once you've retrieved all three of these things, we can move on to the code. For this example, I created a console application. First, I include the azure.ai.openai package, which I retrieved from NuGet. If you search for Azure OpenAI, it's the first result, but notice it's in beta, so make sure that you check the include pre-release. There are two primary ways of interacting with the chat API. One is a non-streaming option and one is a streaming option. I'm going to show you both, but first I'm going to show you the non-streaming option. I created two implementations of the chat in this program, one using streaming and one not using streaming. Let's check out the non-streaming option first. If I scroll down, you can see that I implemented a non-streaming chat method. The first thing you need to do is create an OpenAI client object and you pass in the URL to your resource and the secret key that you copied from before. Then we can create a chat completions options object. We're going to pass this into the API later. In this, you set your settings that are going to determine how the model functions. The first option is the messages. And in this, you pass at least one message and it's a system message with chat role system that gives the language model guidance on the kind of content you wish to have it answer questions about, um, how you'd like to format it, etc. In this case, we kept it very generic. You're an AI assistant that helps people find information. Max tokens helps decide how large your requests and responses can be. And then temperature, nucleus sampling factor, frequency penalty, and presence penalty help control what kind of responses you get. The temperature parameter introduces randomness into the responses. Its value can be 0 through 1.0, where 0 is the least random and 1.0 is the most random. This can affect the creativity of the answers. The nucleus sampling factor is another way to affect the creativity of the responses. It's a value 0 through 1. And if you, for example, used 0.1, it would only consider tokens in the top 10% of likelihood for the next token that it chooses. This would reduce the creativity. So having a larger number would allow all tokens to be considered and provide possibly more creative responses. OpenAI recommends to use this or temperature, but not both. The frequency penalty controls use of repetitive words. Its value can be 0 through 1.0. If it's a higher number, the system is not going to choose words that occur very frequently in its training data. For example, if you had a high frequency penalty, it may not use the word cat. If it needed to describe a cat, it would use feline because that word is used less often. If you keep this number low, then it won't do that. Finally, the presence penalty controls the repetitions of words in the responses, and that's a value 0 through 1.0. If you have a high number, it will penalize the model if it tries to repeat words in its answer. 
So if you want it to not repeat words in its response, then have a high presence penalty. With a low number, that will not penalize the repetition. And if that can help it be more clear and accurate, because sometimes a clear and accurate response requires repetition. Okay, back to the code. So now that we know what these options are, we can go into a loop where we can receive input from the user and send that to the chat model. So first I print to the console a prompt, and then I read text from the user. I have an option here to quit the program if the user types quit, no matter what case they use, and that'll just break out of the loop. The first thing I do is I add the message that they type into the messages in the options because I'm going to be sending that along to the API. And I send the actual line of text they typed in and chat roll.user so the system knows this came from the user. And then I can print out response. So how do we get the response? So to get the response, I create a response with a chat completion generic option and await the get chat completions async method on the client. I pass in my options object and the name of my deployment model, which I also got from the website before. When that call is complete, we can retrieve the response as a chat completions object. The chat completions object could have more than one response in it if we had configured it that way. Our options above, we left out the choices option, so we're only gonna get one response, but it was possible for it to have more than one. So the chat completion needed to account for that and has a choices collection here. If I refer to choices bracket zero, that's gonna give me the first and only response. Inside the choices bracket zero is, a, is the chat message itself that is the response. It is a chat role dot assistant, not a chat role dot user. And it also has content, which we can retrieve and I assign to the full response string and print out. And the last thing I do is I take that chat message and put it back into the options messages because we want to include the chat response in the next request. So the context of our conversation isn't lost. So as you accumulate these messages, you keep adding them back into the options if you wish the context to expand and grow based on that. If I didn't put that chat message back into the options messages list, then the model could not further expand upon what it answered before because it wouldn't remember it. Okay, let's try this out. I'm going to ask what color is the sky? Now you can see that the entire response came back in one instant. It didn't chunk in like you might have seen in ChatGPT or Bing. This is because we're not using streaming responses, which I'll do in the next example. Now in this, if I chat again, it's going to include this answer in it. So I can say, what color are you talking about? And it's going to know that it talked about blue. It's actually uh, being a little bit obtuse about that, but um, uh, at least it knows we're talking about the sky. So uh, I was <laughs> expecting it to say blue, but it didn't. But that's okay. At least it knew the context of the conversation. Now let me just quit. Now let me show you the streaming example. So let me go up to the top, and I'm going to hide this and expand my streaming client method. And I will uncomment that and comment this out. Now it's very similar. In fact, most of it's identical. Uh, the beginning part's the same. This is all the same. What changes is right here after you get your response. The response that comes back is actually of type streaming chat completions. Now you have to deal with this a little differently than the regular chat completions you have to use a loop because it's going to repeatedly chunk in the response as it comes. So what we do here is we do a loop 
for each chat choice, in this case there's only gonna be one, as I discussed before, but what happens is multiple chat messages come back in a streaming format. So the messages come back, but they're partial answers. So you have to keep looping through them and appending the content to the string that you wish to store the complete answer in, which I do here, and then print out. But I print out as I go, so we can see it kind of chunking in. But once it's done, the entire response comes in, so this full response string, which I then add back in as a chat message to the options messages collection so that the context can be retained the next time the person asks a question. So let's try this one out and see the difference. Let me make the question slightly different. See how the answer came in in two chunks? Then I can follow up and I can say, uh, explain the colors you chose. Okay, so it still knows the context and it's giving me more information and you can see how it chunked in. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I'm going to put the code on GitHub, so look in the description for a link. And I'd love to hear your comments about how you're going to use GPT in your applications. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.